Throughout history, many foreign armies have clashed, fighting for land, treasures, or as retaliation. But there are two warrior groups that never got to fight each other as they were separated by thousands of miles and vast oceans. In today's video, we will discuss who would win in a battle between the Buddhist Shaolin monks and the Nordic Vikings. Who were the Shaolin monks? The Shaolin Monastery is a temple in China famous for the monks trained in the art of Kung Fu. They show impressive flexibility, strength, and endurance. The Shaolin monks have established a worldwide reputation for being the ultimate Buddhist warriors and a force not to be reckoned with. The history of Shaolin started 1,500 years ago when a stranger arrived in China from a land in the West. He brought with him a new interpretation of a religion that now spans into modern-day China. Buddhists are generally considered a peaceful religion and value principles of nonviolence and self-sacrifice to avoid harming others. That being said, there was a special group that were trained to be fighters when peace was not an option. These Shaolin monks were loyal soldiers that stood up to fight tyrants and raiders who wanted to violate their sacred temple. Shaolin monks are still in existence today, only they do not train for combat and instead seek inner enlightenment and perform impressive feats of physical strength and acrobatics. So could these peaceful monks kill and still be in good standing with their god? Well, many of the high-ranked monks would show compassion and avoid killing, obeying their teachings. However, Shaolin monks have had to break these rules in the past to defend themselves and the temple. Who were the Vikings? The Vikings were a Norse people who primarily came from southern Scandinavia, which is now present-day Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. From the 8th to the 11th centuries, they traveled across Europe to raid, loot, murder, pillage, and violate the communities that they came in contact with. Vikings have become infamous in history for the wave of violent crimes that shaped the genetic makeup of many countries. Who would start the fight? Buddhist monks would train at the Shaolin Temple in a form of the religion known as Chan Buddhism, the core philosophy of this religion was to perform hard labor to achieve enlightenment, working their bodies to exhaustion, which would unlock the mind's full capability. Wei Nang, a legendary figure in the early history of Chan Buddhism, wrote that he would pound wheat into grain over the course of weeks, allowing him to reach a superior level of knowingness. With this philosophy and the need to protect the temple and its treasures, their strength evolved in such a way that built an efficient defense. They did not need to attack others as it was not what they were seeking to achieve in life. When it came to the Vikings, they measured what they could gain against the resistance they would face. They would usually prey on settlements with weaker inhabitants, but were also willing to fight extremely hard for much larger prizes. If the Vikings saw the scale of the Shaolin Temple, they would rightfully assume that treasures, some of which were priceless to the monks, would have been stored inside. Therefore, the Vikings wouldn't hesitate in trying to raid the temple, willing to storm the peaceful society to strip them of their food, artifacts, and currency. Vikings were bulky brutes who used intimidation and violence to forcefully take what they wanted. They were a warrior breed that spent hundreds of years traveling Europe as well as other places like Ireland, Iceland, Greenland, and Canada. Despite the experience they may have had during their long history, the majority of Viking clans were made up of peasants who were poorly trained and insufficiently equipped for battle. 
Shaolin monks trained seven days a week from half past five in the morning to six in the afternoon, only stopping to eat. This means they were far better disciplined and more universally trained throughout the ranks. A Viking's diet was rich in protein as meats were a common part of their diet, as well as bread that they would steal when storming settlements. This gave them more bulk and raw strength, but compared to the monks would slow them down, especially if they wore armor. Shaolin monks would eat a plain vegetarian diet, which had reduced protein that made them leaner and quicker. Commonly, they would feed upon fruit, vegetables, white rice, noodles, and steamed buns. Though the attributes of speed and endurance were enhanced in the monks, they would not be as physically strong as the Vikings. With the right weapon, they could deliver a swift and deadly blow as long as it could cut through any armor worn and bypass their blade. Though the monks were known to train with steel weapons, the majority concentrated on unarmed combat and staff fighting. Vikings, on the other hand, used superior blades and other blunt weapons to inflict as much damage as possible against the people they targeted. When it comes to actual combat experience, Vikings excel. Shaolin monks would prepare for battle by practicing with each other, but would rarely need to use their skills, as their numbers and fearsome reputation would typically discourage raiders. Vikings were warriors who fought among each other to settle disagreements and to establish their role among the clan. Like the monks, they too practiced with each other to hone their battle skills. The temperament of the Vikings was much more volatile than the peaceful monks, making their battle style far more vicious. In fact, Vikings believed that the only way they could get to Valhalla, which was their form of heaven, was to earn a glorious warrior's death. This made them ruthless and fearless, a terrifying combination. Some warriors were even known to eat poisonous mushrooms so that they went berserk in battle, ensuring they fought to their fullest potential. There is a misinformed view that all Vikings wore armor into battle. This isn't strictly true as many were peasants joining ranks for a better life. Though many wouldn't have had chain mail, shields, or leathers, overall they would have had more than the Shaolin monks, who wore none. What most Vikings lacked in armor and shields, they made up with in formation and ruthless intensity during battle. So what exactly would the Shaolin monks have in terms of defense? Well, all Buddhist monks train their minds to ignore all pain inflicted upon them, even those suffering grave injury. This would mean that if a Viking attacker greatly injured a monk, they would not allow the pain to incapacitate them. Though this would not necessarily save their life, it could keep them fighting long enough to pay the favor back. Who would retreat first? If the Shaolin monks were challenged at their temple, they would, without a doubt, stick to their oath of protection and fight with everything they had to protect their sacred land and the artifacts it possessed. This means they would never retreat. Despite their lust of bloodshed and stealing, Viking raiders weren't used to their opponents fighting back. They would often charge through a settlement or village in the dead of night, ambushing them as they slept. This would catch them off guard, resulting in death, capture, or force them to flee. If the Shaolin monks were to stand up for themselves and defend the temple, then it is possible that some of the less honorable raiders would withdraw. That being said, those who seek entry to Valhalla would become the worthy opponents and push forward. Of course, a battle between the two would come down to numbers. Vikings were known to travel and sail with many of their kind. If they attacked the temple with more or an equal amount to that of the monks, the peaceful protectors would find themselves losing in a bloody and violent massacre. If the monks had a much larger number of warriors, it could be possible that they would last long enough to take the victory, though they would be far less in number by the end of the conflict. The monks were universally skilled and disciplined, fighting only for peace. The Vikings were experienced and fought for honor and riches. 
The monks would not meet on a battlefield to accept combat, meaning that they would be challenged on the steps of the temple. This would back them into a corner they wouldn't dream of leaving, even to renumber or to formulate a strategy. In conclusion, the Vikings would be met with a challenging resistance, but their blades and thirst for glory would claim the victory.